Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. My name's Andy, and I'm a Microsoft 365 Collaboration Specialist. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the new Bing. On Tuesday, February 7th, Microsoft held an event with OpenAI, and they announced the new Bing, which is going to bring Search and OpenAI, as well as ChatGPT, into one single search engine. And this is really exciting. As someone who's been using ChatGPT for the last few months, I've found it to be invaluable in research and working through developing content, especially for Microsoft user adoption and training. I'm really excited to try out the new Bing and the new capabilities. So immediately, Microsoft's provided a little bit of information about uh, some of the features and what's actually available as part of the new Bing experience. It's going to take Bing search and combine it with the chat-based capabilities from OpenAI and ChatGPT, but it's a custom model called Prometheus. It's really cool what Microsoft and OpenAI have been able to develop together. You're going to be able to find complete answers, so you can run traditional search queries, but you can also use natural language. And some really exciting things are not only do you get results back, but it also gives you links and references to some of those search results as it uh, presents that content back to you. The chat is a brand new way to experience uh, search here, uh, something that we haven't seen from a traditional search engine. So that's really cool. But it goes much further than that. They say a creative spark, and it definitely will help with that. It's got some really cool tools in it to help you generate some ideas, to create some outlines and brainstorm information. But it's a brand new experience. So I'm going to walk you through uh, getting started with ChatGPT and the new Bing experience and, and how you can uh, kickstart your journey uh, through this. So the first thing you need to do is you actually need to head over to bing.com slash new. That's going to give you kind of an introduction to the new Bing. There's a sign up list that you can go ahead and sign up for access. Uh, they'll send you a notification and let you know when you've actually cleared the wait list. I signed up immediately and uh, Wednesday of this week, I was actually uh, accepted into uh, the new Bing. So I've been able to play with it for the last couple of days and that's been really cool. So once you have signed up for it, then you can go ahead and actually start using it directly in your web browser. But I do recommend that you take one extra step. Go and download the most recent Microsoft Edge from the dev channel. I'm on a Mac, so I went ahead and downloaded it from uh, for Mac. But if you're on other operating systems, uh, there is a Microsoft Edge dev available for those systems as well. Go ahead and download the new uh, Edge dev build. That's actually what you're seeing here in this window because it adds some new features that are really, really cool and they take this to the next level. Now from there, we can head over to Bing and we can start our search experience. Right away, this is different. Uh, I have the search box, but it's also a chat box. And so from here, I can start my search experience to start my journey. So I can go and say, And it looks like a traditional search. It gives me the traditional search responses. However, if I head over here to where it says chat, right along the top, it takes me into the chat experience. And from there, it's gonna function kind of like chat GPT, where natural language uh, will be combined with search, and then it's gonna start generating those search results. But here's where it actually goes to the next level. Inside of those search results, you're gonna get uh, natural language and responses, but you're also gonna get links and reference material. So you can go and validate, and you could follow up on that material later, which I think is really cool. Additionally, you can provide feedback directly inside of there. Uh, you're gonna be able to like or dislike, and based off of your responses, you can actually send feedback to Microsoft, which is really cool. And then through the more section, you can actually copy that response and you can use it somewhere else. Maybe paste it in your OneNote notebook, take it to a Word document, start drafting a blog post with it, and so forth. The other thing that I think is really cool here is not only is this a chat, natural language based uh, conversation, uh, but it does give me some suggestions at the bottom. So based off of the context of what we are having a conversation around, my question and its response, down below, it's giving me some more information. So for example, it mentions the Prometheus model. Well, what is that? Well, 
there's a suggestion and it's going to go ahead and through that prompt it's going to fill out and tell me a little bit more about the prometheus model and how microsoft has customized the chat GPT instance that they're using and tailored it specifically for their Bing search engine, really taking this to the next level, making it much more powerful than maybe what you've experienced previously with uh, chat GPT. So I went ahead and did a couple of uh, queries. I'm gonna show you here in uh, the next tab. So I wanted to create a YouTube video around this just to see what was capable. So I told it, I wanna create an outline discussing the features of the new Bing for a YouTube video. And it says, that sounds like an interesting project. I can help you create an outline. So I asked, what are the main features of the new Bing? And here's the response that we got. So <clears throat> the chat box, you can interact with natural language as we've been demonstrating here. Summarized responses, it's really cool. Uh, you can have a conversation or you can get some technical information and have it actually summarize that uh, down to a series of bullet points. You could even have it summarized down to a specific user reader level, which is really cool. A conversational search. So I ask a question, it gives me a response. I can follow up with additional questions and dive a little bit deeper into that topic. I can even have it ask me uh, questions and kind of do like a Q&A so I can better retain that information. It's also creative. It's not just about search results. I could ask it to help me to draft a poem or maybe lyrics for a song or generate an idea for a story. And start breaking it down and here they're also talking about the personal planner so it can help you to plan with task that's really cool we'll uh, circle back to that but notice there's some inline links then, then there's some footnotes at the bottom telling me where that information is coming from which i think is really helpful because now i can follow up on that information so based off of this it also gave me a, uh, a series of um, snippets from the web some resources that maybe i want to follow up on like the verge had an article where they go hands-on with a new bing thought that was pretty cool now i uh, went ahead and asked an additional question how can someone sign up for the new bing provided specific instructions on how to do that to sign up for the new bing just go to bing.com new which web browsers are supported well it works in most modern browsers. However, I mentioned earlier, signing up for the new edge, and we'll show you those capabilities in a second. And I asked it, what are the Bing features that are exclusive to the Edge dev build? And so it's gonna show you. It has the sidebar, it has Copilot, and it has uh, in private mode. So with no further ado, in the upper right-hand corner, we've got the Bing icon, select on that. And this is the sidebar panel. Now this sidebar panel has three main areas. We have chat, we have Compose, and then we have Insights. And so I can use this to access the new Bing no matter where I am inside of the internet, what, what page I'm on or where I'm actually working, which is really cool. And it's gonna function essentially the same way. So how does Bing use AI? And now it's gonna give me a conversation around that. And I can use that as my research assistant. I can use that as my search assistant as I'm working, which is really cool. But it doesn't stop there. It'll actually pull information maybe based off of the page that you're currently on. So I'm going to move over to a new page. I was doing a little research earlier on Microsoft Teams meetings and the different meeting roles. So I've got an article from Microsoft pulled up. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to click on the little sweeper because I want to do a new topic. And I'm just going to say, um, summarize the current web page I'm on. We'll wait just a second for the response to come in. And this page is about the participant settings for specific meeting in Microsoft Teams. It's contextually aware of the page that I'm on. And so it can give me information uh, around that. Ask a follow-up question. And again, contextually aware of what I'm uh, referred to previously in the conversation and the current page that I'm on. But I'm not done yet. There's a few other things that we can work with uh, as well. Now here it's showing me a couple other uh, links right in the sidebar. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head up to, uh, well, before I head up to the top, notice, retry for this page only. So we can actually search through the page. That's really cool. But I'm gonna head up to the top and I'm gonna say compose. This is game-changing. 
I've been able to look up and have kind of a conversation and get directed toward information, but here I'm actually going to be able to take action on that information. So I can say, uh, write about, and we'll say um, teams So I'm just going to say Teams participant settings in a meeting. I'm going to pick the tone. I just want this to be informational. Do I want a paragraph? Do I want an email? Do I want a blog post? And then I can pick the length with that. Let's go ahead and generate a draft. It's going to give me a preview right down at the bottom. So you can see the preview is actually generating in real time. I can read that as it's actually coming through. It's drafting that article or that content for me. So I can read through that. And if that's what I'm interested in, if that's my starting point for maybe the draft that I'm going to write, I can go right down here. I can just go ahead and copy that information. I can also select all inside of here uh, and then copy and paste however I want. But I noticed that there's some other really cool integration. I'm a big OneNote fan. I use OneNote for a lot of my personal knowledge management. So I have this snippet of information here. I could just copy and paste it into this OneNote document, or I can go to the Add to Site button right uh, at the bottom. Click on Add to Site, and it auto copies that stuff right into my OneNote notebook for me, which is really cool. Now I'm gonna head back to uh, the main window that I was working on before. There's some answers over here that I think are important, but there's also some inline links. I'm gonna copy that from um, the screen here. I'm gonna head back to my OneNote notebook, add a new page in, and then I'm just gonna paste that. It'll paste that into my document, and it also pastes it as hyperlinks. So I actually have a uh, hyperlink um, built right into the document, and it pulled that directly from the search results. So really great interaction with, in this case, Office inside of the web, and helping me to search and find the research that I need to start putting my notes together. That starts out my rough draft process. From there, I can start to polish this up, but all the links and all the references are already built into the document for me, which I think is absolutely um, amazing. And you'll see we can do paragraphs, we can do like an email, we can uh, start creating a blog post, we can start generating ideas from this panel. And then lastly, they've got their insights. The insights just allow you to dig deeper with some um, related content based off of what we might be working on. So if I head over to the participant settings uh, window, when I change over to that, it's gonna give me um, some insights that are specific to Microsoft Teams meetings. So this is all built into the uh, current Edge dev uh, build, which is really awesome. Uh, I really think that this does take the search experience to the next level. I really do think this is a game changing technology. This is just scratching the surface. This is only a couple of days old. Uh, so I wanted to put together this quick video to walk through these capabilities. I hope you found this interesting. I look forward to following up with more capabilities here in the uh, near future. So thanks for stopping by and hopefully I'll see you next time.